Alright, I'm back with Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 6, Episode 3 review. Alright, so we start off where we left off last week with Kirk and Rashida at the table where Kirk actually admitted that he did lie a little bit. Well, he lied about everything, I guess, because he said he didn't know her. He said he did know her and he made some bad decisions i.e. slept with her and the baby could possibly be his so they start fighting a little bit uh she did talk about oh i'm the type of girl you want to go and do a girl out strip club is that another so then she took her ring off sat it on the table she didn't say nothing like we getting divorced nothing like that but she did tell him to leave so he had to leave um Kirk said that he did lie, but he lied because he loved Rashida, and he didn't want to hurt her. And Rashida kicked him out. Then we get to the fellas at the car wash. It was um, Young Jock, Scrappy, and Waka Flocka. Waka Flocka had his own confessional and everything. I guess he become a real-life character on this season. Because, you know, last season or all the other seasons he was on, he never really was a character. He just His name was mentioned a lot by his wife. Or girlfriend, I don't even know, fiance, I don't know, and his mom, because his mom be more part of the show than him. But this season, it seemed like he actually is becoming his own character. Um, car for whatever reason, they met at a car wash. Waka Flocka started talking. Well, they talked about each person's situation, and Waka Flocka said, first of all, they made fun of Jock for going back to Carly, talking about he doing the moonwalk. <laughs> that was pretty funny, scrappy. Was talking about that. They was talking about how Scrappy don't really want to get married. That was pretty. It's been pretty obvious. I never thought Scrappy was going to get married to Bambi. I just thought they was a boyfriend girlfriend type thing. I mean, we saw them get together on the show and get engaged. They they rush things kind of fast. Um, and then they talk about Waka Flocka. He said he haven't been home in six months. He talked about how he missed everything. Like he missed um, his daughter the most, and that's what really make him want to go home. Then we go to Tommy's scene. Tommy is hanging out with, well, first of all, Tommy says she's trying to change her life, which we heard last episode. She says she doesn't want to, she wanted to go a year straight without going to jail. So I'm like, dang, how many years in a row has it been since you've not been in jail? Like, you be, like when you was 22, you was in jail, 23 in jail, 24 in jail. Like, she's trying to go a year, like, dang, that means she went to jail a lot. But then again, she got, do got 36 mug shots, so. I doubt she got 36 in one day, or one year, should I say. But anyway, she says she's trying to start hanging out with better people. So, surprise, surprise, she's hanging out with Tammy. So, Tammy and Tommy, I don't I don't see them as being real friends. Like, I'm, I'm going to call this a, kind of a scripted scene. Like, I don't think they really hang out. I think it's kind of like, um, Mona said, hey, you two, let's do a scene together. And they just did that together like that. I don't think they're really friends. Uh, then we go to, well, basically, uh, what's her name? Tom, T Tammy was telling Tommy about how she needs to change her life because they got daughters the same age. And she's a good mom and all this, that, and the other. And I'm just like, well, majority of us didn't even know that Tommy had a baby until this season, an uh, episode ago. But whatever. Then we go to Jessica and D Jessica Dime scene. They're at Arian's fashion show, which I forgot Arian was even a character on the show. I, I don't understand how Arian went all these seasons of being on this show because she'd been on here just as long as Stevie and Mimi, and she's still not in the opening credit. She'd never get she get barely any camera time. I wonder do they even pay her? I know she's not getting paid as much as some of these other people. Anyway, Arian had a fashion show, and Jessica. Yeah, Jessica Dawn was in the fashion show. And, oh, that's the thing. When they were inside the car, Tommy and Tammy, Tammy invited Tommy to the fashion show. Tommy didn't really want to go, but she said, all right, I'll go. And she really didn't want to go because Carly was there. And her and Carly, you know, you, you know what happened last season. If you don't know, they got into a, a real-life fight. Like, they was really throwing fist fight. <laughs> it was an argument. Because Carly slept with Tommy's, at the time, boyfriend, Scrap. Basically, Mimi Mimi don't really like Tommy either. You can tell by how she was acting, how she was talking. She was saying, why she here? Why she here with Tammy, of all people? That's an odd parent, which I agree. But whatever. Um, they After Jessica walks, they get the, all the girls get to the side. And 
apparently, and what's her name? Tammy tries to get Carly and Tommy to squash their beef and become friends. And Carly seemed like she was up for it, but Tommy didn't. And then Tommy said that she apologized for what she did. And I was just like, all right, she fake, she fake. I don't like Tommy, she fake, because she knows she didn't mean that apology, whatever. But then they go for a, no, this is where I thought she was fake. She said, give me a handshake or something like that. And then Tommy was like, oh, no, I'm a hugger, I'm a hugger. But then the way she hugged Carly, I was like, okay, that was weird. And Carly was okay with it. She acted like it didn't bother her. She, like, squoles her and was shaking her and stuff. Basically, like, I really want to fight you, but this is fake. But whatever. <clears throat> then um, they started talking more, and uh, Carly said, I'm glad we could we could do this because I was meaning to reach out to you anyway. And then Tommy said, why would you be reaching out to me, Carly? And then... Carly said, oh, wait, well, I thought we were moving past all this. And then they start arguing again. But this is where I think Tommy is real. Because I think I think it was a real question. Why would you be reaching out to me, Carly? We don't get along. And Carly just took it the wrong way. I mean, she just was, she really wanted to know, why would you be reaching out to me? You said you mean to reach out to me. For what? We're not friends. That's the way I took it. So I was more on Tommy's side. Carly took offense to it. They started going back and forth. And then, the other girls was just looking at it crazy because they knew that these two wasn't going to be friends. And Tommy kept it real. She was like, let's be honest. I'm never going to be friends with this girl. And I'm like, I don't know why y'all even did that fake apology and stuff in the first place. Y'all knew. I, I didn't think y'all was going to fall out that fast. But y'all wasn't going to be cordial or nothing like that. Well, maybe cordial, but that's it. That's as far as it was going to go. Then, oh. Tommy walked away, and she pushed Carly, and Carly didn't really do nothing, but I thought that was funny. Then, and by the way, I forgot to even say this, Jessica Dime, why is she even on this show? Why is she still here? Like, she got brought on because she moved to Atlanta, like, uh, whose friend is she? Why is she, I, I think she friends most with Carly, but, like, Jessica Dime is just irrelevant to me. I don't like her. I don't know why she on the show, period. Maybe some people do like her. Maybe she do got a big fan base. But I don't like her, and I don't know many people that do. So, I, I, she just is irrelevant to me. Anyway, Carly said, I got to talk to you four. Meaning Melissa, Mimi, Tammy, and Arian. Arian don't need to be on the show either. Except, but she is best friends with Mimi. Jessica don't got no relation with nobody. So, I don't know she on the show. But anyway. Jessica was like, oh, dang, you don't want me to know. It's okay, I'll leave. And I was like, yeah, please do, because you're relevant. And take Arian with you. But anyway, she basically started gossiping about Rashida and Rashida's little situation. And I was trying to figure out why she even brought this up, because she already knew, she already told Mimi, Melissa was there, so she already knew. She didn't want Jessica to know. The only other one is Arian, but I feel like Mimi would have already told Arian. The only other one was Tap. Ta well, I can't get these people name right. Tammy, Tammy, Tommy, the sound one. Tammy, and Tammy wasn't here for it. She said, "I don't want to talk about this. Why are we talking about this? Why are you telling me before you tell her?" And then Carly yelled and was like, "I did tell her. I sat with her." I'm like, "Oh dang!" I thought they was gonna go back and forth for a minute, but they didn't. Then we go to oh well, basically. Um, Tammy said she didn't want to hear about it and they all walk away so that conversation went nowhere then we go to Rod and Jasmine scene um, and we meet Kiana so apparently it's not a two person relationship it's a three person relationship it's Rod, Kiana and Jasmine they all in a relationship with the baby that lived there too this is, this is a weird thing Weird situation with these three. Whatever. Rod, Rod said Rod, Rod said that it was his idea for all three of them to be in a relationship. Um, Rod said that Jasmine and Kiana broke up when he went to jail. So I don't really think it's like a three-person relationship. I really don't. I think that though the two of them are with him. I don't think the two of them are, like, in a relationship. I really don't. They might call it that, but they don't act like it. That's what I think. 
But anyway, um, he sit with them and he says, are you done with Kirk? Jasmine's like, yeah, stop asking me, blah, 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 I'm tired of it. And he's like, no, I'm talking about you. Apparently, Kiana, Kiana was with Kirk too. And I'm like, what the? This is, this is the best storyline of Love and Hip Hop, period, all seasons. Like, it just keep growing and growing and growing. Because I don't think anybody even expected for this other girl to have been with Kirk too. And that's why they broke up. So I'm like, okay, maybe they actually was in a relationship. But then again, if y'all in a relationship, that means y'all was cheating on each other. This is a whole big, it's a big thing with these three. But anyway, Rod started telling them about Mimi. Oh, and Kiana said she was done with Kirk. She ain't messed with him. And she didn't know that Jasmine was with Kirk. So, good for Kirk. Well, I shouldn't say that. But Kirk, he got two young girls. And by the way, Kiana and Jasmine look alike. They look like twin sisters. And apparently, they worked at the same strip club and all that, blah, 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 blah. And Rod, by the way, he remind me, I finally realized who he remind me of. He remind me of the dad off of Baby Boy. Not, not, no. He remind me of the mom's boyfriend off Baby Boy. That's who he remind me of. I don't know his name, but that's who he remind me of. Anyway, um, yeah, so then Rob started telling them about Mimi and how he tied of Mimi with telling people that he a scam artist because he's been hearing about it in the streets. And one of them was like, you need to talk to her. Talk to her. So then blah, blah, blah. Rod said he going to reach out to Mimi because he's tired of hearing that he's a scam artist. Then we go to Stevie scene. He at his house cleaning up. <laughs> Stevie scene is pretty funny. I like this scene. Well, not scene, but his story with his daughter and his house. He definitely came a long way from all these other seasons we've seen now. But anyway... Uh, he invited Mimi over, and they seem like they're in a good place. They're not trying to be in a relationship. They're not trying to be enemies. They really is co-parenting and stuff. So, Mimi and Stevie sit down. Mimi tells Stevie about Kirk, which I'm like, dang, Tam Tam Tammy was just yelling about them gossiping about that. And now Mimi telling Stevie, which that don't got nothing to do with what, whatever. They is her child's father, so whatever. So then, um... Stevie said the perfect family, not too perfect, which that's pretty funny because Jocelyn said the same thing when she was on The Real. Like, people think Kirk and Rashida's relationship is the most perfect one, but I don't think that. I don't think Kirk and Rashida was paying as having a perfect life because, or relationship, because in the past, like, two, three seasons, we've seen them bickering and him going to the cabins and all this stuff and her getting pregnant and trying to continue with her career even though he say no. So I don't see them as trying to be perfect or portray them as perfect. Basically, um, oh, by the way, Mimi, I have to mention this, her boobs, they look so fake. And I know that they are fake, but in that confessional scene, I was watching this show with my grandma and she even pointed that out. She never seen the show once. She just was like, she done had some type of surgery on her breast. It looked... Her boobs look so fake, and just, she need to, that confessional, she, she look horrible. Mimi look horrible in her confessional. If you don't know what I'm talking about, on the next episode, look at Mimi's confessional and look at her boobs. She look horrible, period. Um, Mimi talking about how she can't forgive Jocelyn at all, period. She don't want Jocelyn around her baby at all, period. And at first, I didn't know what she was talking about, but then I realized, I remember, Jocelyn was spreading bad rumors about Steve, real, real bad, like, that he was touching his daughter inappropriately. I agree with Mimi. Don't. I can't forgive you for that. So. I agree with Mimi. Don't. We can't forgive Jocelyn. Don't let her around the baby at all period. Then we go to Jocelyn and Melissa scene. They was at the DNA test place. Melissa is cute. I gotta say. But. One thing about Melissa I don't understand is her name. Melissa. Like normally when you were a girl is a stud. She changed her name a little bit. Like, Christina is Chris, you know, type stuff like that from last season. But her name is Melissa. That's a super girly name. <laughs> and she just roll with it. Like, I'm Melissa, but she dresses as a boy and stuff like that. But whatever. Anyway, um, they go to the DNA place. Melissa did not want to be there at all, period. Um, they go in there. Jocelyn gives the underwear. Um, the doctor said one thing about this. This was in a Ziploc bag. I can't use it. Jocelyn's like, oh, they show it on TV. They show it wrong. Melissa was agreeing with her. The doctor said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I can't do it anyway because he not here. And Jocelyn's like, oh, man, so now I got to really wait for him to be in court. 
But my thing is, Jocelyn, why do you care? If you know that he, the child's father, why do you care so much about getting the DNA? It should be him trying to get the DNA. That's what I think. But Or trying to get the DNA test done, should I say. Anyway, we go to Waka Flocka and Tammy's scene. I didn't really care that much about this. I think this was the first scripted scene of this episode. I don't think this was Waka Flocka's first time going back home. But I think they did it over blah, blah, blah. So... He goes in, Tammy's like, what are you doing here? Like, she wasn't even shocked enough or nothing like that for me to believe that this was his first time coming here. Basically, she said, you can come in, but the bags can't. She was acting real cocky and stuff. I don't think this was his first time. They go upstairs, they talk. He's talking about, I missed this, missed that. She's playing hard to get, like, blah, 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 no, no, no. Basically, she was playing hard to get and said, no, you can't come here. You had this and you lost it. Which is pretty funny because now we see what's going on now. they back together. Or she's back with him, shall I say. And everything like that. Um, I didn't really care that much about that scene. Then we go to Jessica and Tommy scene. Now these two... Oh, and by the way. Tommy also apologized to Jessica back at the um, fashion show. And they, they were on good terms, period. So they meet up. They talk about it again. And these two, they seem like they really could be friends. And to be honest, I thought Tommy was going to be off the show when Scrap went to jail and he was off the show. But she actually is an okay character to stay on the show. She, Jessica going to need to be stay friends with Tommy. Because I think she the one that can really be Tommy's road dog. Always be with her. Kind of like a Mimi and Arian thing. Or a Jocelyn and Dawn thing. Or a Scrap, a Stevie and Benzino thing like they used to be. But whatever. So, Tommy, during this scene, seemed like she was so high. She really did. But Jessica says they should go on a double date. They, they were laughing. They was having a good old time. And Jessica said, we spent all that time hating each other. Look at this. And all that, blah, blah, blah. And Jessica says they should go on a double date. And um, Tommy agrees. So, they go on a double date later. Mimi, We get to a Mimi and Melissa scene. Mimi meets up with... Oh, Mimi... And Melissa meet up with Rod at Melissa's store. This was a good scene. I like this. Five minutes into Mel Mimi. First of all, Melissa asked if Mimi and Rod still talk. And Mimi said, no, we never talk. They haven't talked since they broke up. But Mimi keep calling this guy a scam artist. It's kind of ridiculous. But when he came in, they at first, they was good. Him and Melissa. Him and Mimi start going at it five minutes into the conversation you can tell that they was they real exes like this ain't scripted <laughs> at all and she said you the same scam artist he said you the same porno star it was so funny um and then uh what's the name rod says i got a surprise for you let me send a text text the other two get out the car which is jasmine and kiana they come in Mimi looked intimidated, in my opinion. She looked intimidated, like, who are these two? But anyway, they told the story of what's going on with Rob. And Mimi's like, oh, my God. This and the other. Um, where am I? Mimi looked stupid. And then Melissa became defensive. And she started asking stuff. And I really like Mimi, but this was starting to make me not like her that much, for real. So... I mean, I like Melissa, but this is making me start not to like her. Because she started being defensive talking about Jasmine and Melissa. And Melissa has said, uh, yeah, it's not really your place to be asking me these questions. Because Melissa at... And I didn't understand how Melissa was mad at these two girls. They didn't really do anything. Melissa and, um... I mean, Jasmine and Kiana, well, they did do something. Because they was with sleeping with a married man but if they didn't know then that's not really they, they fault it's really not so i don't see how she is so defensive and so mad at this and melissa's all like you don't understand what you're doing you do you understand that you're messing up a family does that another she was like and then melissa was like so how do you know the baby's his you look like you basically calling the girl a hoe and i'm like dang so the girl's like, this isn't really your place to be asking me, questioning me about this and not, not, this, that, and the other. And Melissa says, oh, I can question you about anything you want. And this is why I really didn't like Melissa. Because they're going at it. And Melissa said, uh, well, you and my, you and my 
um, bar. This is all mine. You sitting on my chair. And the lady like, okay, I don't care. So what? And Melissa's like, well, why don't you get out? And she kicked them out. I don't like Melissa acting like this, acting all cocky and stuff. So Melissa kicked them out, which I did not like. And then she started complimenting them, talking about, yeah, I, you cute, and I hit you. And then she's like, and then the girl's like, no, you have to hit me from the back because I don't want to look at you. Blah blah blah. And then Rob, Rod, whatever, he said, yo, your spot is actually pretty whack, your bar. And I thought that was pretty funny when he said that, but. Melissa said, okay, like she didn't really care. Then we go to Tommy and Rashida scene. They meet up and they cry together because obviously T Tammy has been through exactly what Rashida been through. But Rashida says, cheating is one thing, but a baby, a whole baby, that's going to be my kid's brother. And Tom Tammy says, yeah, I understand. They start crying together. Tammy actually told Rashida to leave him, leave Kirk so that he can see what it's like not to have her. And I said, oh, hmm, look at that. Because he, she's back with Waka Flocka. But, and I'm not, I don't disagree with her being back with I just thought that was weird that she told Rashida to leave Kirk and let him see what it's like not to be with her. Then we go to Tommy and Jessica's double date. And Jessica says that she's dating a few people right now. She's dating a basketball player. I think she just wanted to put that out there to hear an athlete. And then, but she decided to bring her girl, who was Wa not Waka Flocka, not Wiz Khalifa. Um, who, her girlfriend is somebody's ex. Is it Wiz Khalifa? The one that had the baby with Masika. Fetty Wap. It's Fetty Wap's girlfriend, or Fetty Wap's ex. And the reason why her and Fetty Wap broke up is because Fetty Wap had the baby with Masika, so. There's some extra knowledge. We meet this girl who's Fetty Wap's ex-girlfriend, and now it's Jessica Dom's girlfriend. And Tommy walks in with Jock. Another scripted scene. Um, Jock ain't that dang stupid. He know that this is filming for love and hip hop. Why would you put it, put it on TV that now you wit? It was all stupid. But that's how it ended. It was so such an anticlimactic scene. Um, if anything, they should have ended with the Mimi. The bar scene at Melissa's bar. That should have been where they ended the episode. And this could have been where that part was. But this episode was probably the worst one so far out of the three. But it was still really good. I really like Stevie's scene. And I like the Mimi, Melissa, the Kirk situation. That whole thing. But be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And share the video on all four social media. And be sure to check out my other two um, reviews of Love & Hip Hop. Atlanta season six. Um, until next time, catch you later.